Manipulation is common when people are still so fairly self-focused that all they really care about is advancing their own personal agendas. Why manipulators do what they do is because it works. They can't care. Nothing matters to them except that throne that they want to assign to themselves. People and their lives mean nothing. We are at a point in our social and personal evolution where we simply must recognize such folks for who they are and never, ever afford them the reins of power. This creative enterprise of moving forward to partner with that inner voice and say, you know what? Let's team up here. <laughs>
But most folks don't stop to think about it. They have tunnel vision. They're just interested in advancing their own causes, regardless of the impact sometimes. And mm -hmm. that's uh, why we have many of the difficulties that we have. Mm -hmm. The physicists are realizing, they're realizing the very physical reality of the fact that the universe is so intricately interconnected that an event that can, hap can happen in a galaxy uh, hundreds of millions of light years away and have an impact somewhere else. Who would have thought that? We now have physical evidence for that. You can't escape the interconnectedness of everything in this grand universe. And yet it takes a, a real conversion of the heart for people to care about the impact, to be mindful of what they're doing and why they're doing it and how it might affect another person, place, or thing. Thank you very much, because I was actually already going to ask the question, but you began uh, partially answering it. I'd like to ask, what are the consequences of manipulative relationships? Well, an awful lot of unnecessary heartache and damage. One of the consequences is a phenomenon that I first wrote about in 1996. I, I had uncovered what we commonly now call the gaslighting effect. I didn't have a name for it back then, uh, but the reason my work started to gain attention is because I described this effect, this crazy making feeling that a person who is starting to wake up to the reality of their situation and is, is starting to realize how their manipulative partner operates or, or how the manipulative politician or whoever operates, and they, they see it, they finally see it and they say, oh my goodness, this is what this person is really up to. But the manipulator has them convinced that they're crazy, <laughs> that they don't really understand it, that they're misguided, that they have it read all wrong. And so we commonly call this the gaslighting effect. And it really, it messes with a person's mental framework. Uh, they stop trusting their gut. Uh, they, they, they don't follow their heart. Um, and these tactics that manipulators use have that powerful effect, all of the tactics do. So most manipulators know what they're doing when they try to induce this doubt in you that you have the situation finally read correctly. Um, they know what they're up to. It's all about uh, maintaining a position of power and control and dominance within a relationship. Thank you very much. It is very interesting interesting that you've mentioned about uh, manipulators that people begin to trust and obey them. In this regard, I'd like to ask uh, the question that in your book, you describe manipulators as a certain type of people. Mm -hmm. But in society, since childhood, we're constantly and pretty much everywhere facing manipulative strategies and techniques in the media, in politics, science, education, advertising, social media, networks, sales, you name it. That is with a global manipulation of public opinion and people's behavior. Why did manipulations become to dominate in communications between people in any form of interaction between us? And why do people fear manipulators and show obedience, trust, obey manipulative personalities, and of course, justify their behavior? Okay, the answer to why, the, why manipulators do what they do is a really very simple answer. Uh, it's very basic uh, behavioral psychology. They do it because it works. They do it because it at least appears to work in the short run, especially. It's effective. Uh, if, I, if I am above board, if I tell you, say, within a relationship, whether it's an interpersonal relationship in a marriage or some other close interpersonal relationship, or whether it's on the world stage with somebody trying to talk, somebody in power, political power, trying to talk to the people that they govern. If I tell you, that I'm out to dominate and control you, you're going to resist me. But if I make it seem like I'm doing anything but, if I basically lie to you with all the subtle little tactics that I know how to do, then I'm more likely to be able to dominate and control you without your full awareness. 
And if I'm good at using these techniques like I talk about in my books to gaslight you, when you start to suspect that there's something not quite right about this relationship and I throw these tactics at you, I make you doubt. I make you doubt your own sanity. So the short answer to why manipulators do what they do is because it works, or at least it appears to work in the short run. Now, how do people get duped? They don't trust their gut. We have certain built-in to our constitution, certain built-in signals. You know, when somebody is basically out to do you harm, there's something that churns inside of you. Something says, something here is not quite right. There's something about this person and the way they're operating that's troublesome to me. And they don't stop to give credibility uh, to that churning in their heart and sit with it a while and examine it and say, what's going on here? Why, why do I feel like something's not quite right? And, and grant it legitimacy. They don't trust themselves. They don't. Tr and from a bigger, I hate to get into a, a, a kind of an a overarching spiritual uh, perspective on this, but they don't trust uh, what is in us all that is bigger mm -hmm. than us all that gives us a barometer that that tells us, you know what, this is not healthy. Mm -hmm. This is not good. And we don't pay that enough respect. We, we tend to operate here. We tend to operate here and we don't respect enough what's inside of us all. If we can connect at this level, everything changes. Uh, it's a whole new perspective. I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> I totally understand what you are saying. And I would like, you know, to ask additional question in this regard. So first of all, I understand that people need to learn how to trust themselves. That, as we say, inner voice, something that it comes, is. let's say, use a religious word, uh, something that comes from the soul, right? Yes. But from your point of view, why they're not trusting this inner voice? Either they don't know how, or maybe they, because they grew up in a different environment where people, for example, used to trust the voice, let's say, in the head, to yes. trust logics, to trust, you know, uh, parents, for example, but they have not been learned or taught yes. how to trust the inner voice. Yes. Please tell your opinion. That's a great question. And I sure hope that I can eloquently enough uh, explain explain what, I, what I'm coming to believe about that. I think we become separated from ourselves because the way the world operates generally forces us to, basically. Uh, we have to learn to navigate a very potentially hostile, uh, everyone for themselves kind of world. And uh, we figure out in, in pretty short order how the world kind of works, and we develop strategies to deal with it. So the short answer is that in our separation from ourselves, we have all created a world that also invites us to keep separating from ourselves and to keep, mm -hmm. center, keep us not grounded and not centered uh, and to learn to manipulate so that's what the world teaches us. And so in order to build a better world, it has to start here. And in psychology, there's been a paradigm for many, many years. Uh, it's called the cognitive behavioral paradigm. It's gotten a lot of traction over the years. And what we realize is the ways we think about things, the attitudes that we have and whatnot, they influence how we act in the world. But what we, what we forget is that the opposite is true also. The opposite is true. If we will think outside the box and do differently, mm -hmm. as all the great sages throughout the ages have said, if we will have the courage to do basically the loving thing, it changes us. It changes our attitude. It changes our perspective. 
Um, and it makes a difference in how what how we relate to the world. So it also ends up helping to change the world. When we're well connected to ourselves, and when we know how to love ourselves properly, then we know what it really takes to connect well and to connect lovingly to somebody else. Mm -hmm. but we have it has to start here. I'd like to move move on and ask you the next question, uh, which is also part of manipulations. Um, if we people in this form of relationships, I mean, of course, manipulations, if we continue this form of relationships, continue to prevail, then what threatens us all as a society? Where are we going to get? I use this phrase uh, in my workshops and my training workshops. If we don't get honest with ourselves, about ourselves, and with each other, about each other, and our issues, if we don't put humble truth-seeking at the top of the agenda, if we don't put love at the top of the agenda, then we're not going to make it. And it starts one heart at a time. All kinds of things are possible when we honestly self-reckon and when we reckon lovingly with one another. We've got lots of issues to address and more important today perhaps than ever because of how interconnected we are. But we have to have the heart to humbly doing that. Most folks come to the table that already thinking they have an answer when they barely understand the questions. They come from a political perspective or an ideological perspective like, you know, really why I'm here is to convince you that my way is the right way <laughs> or the way I see it is the right way. That's not a loving engagement and it's not productive and it's not creative. I love the, uh, the, the name you've chosen create, because it has creative with it, it in it. Uh, in the name. Creation is a participatory exercise. It, it's, it's a cooperation with all of that energy in the universe that is still growing this universe. Before I'm going to ask the next question, I will just make a short introduction. We have already like answered it partially like in different questions than during the you know course of communication, but I'd like to Ask it still ask it separately. What an alternative can be offered to manipulative relationships between people? What can be their alternative? It, it all starts with getting grounded. It all starts with reconnecting to the source yourself and trusting your gut. And to the best of your ability, and we all have to answer that question in our heart. Just where is it do we think we're going? What is the purpose of this all? If we're true to ourselves, it makes us so much more likely to be true with one another. In, in, in essence, these, these archetypal dominators who have just about destroyed the world when we've afforded them power in history, they act so so much on pretense. They are so full of themselves. They can't even see, let alone recognize, anything bigger. Uh, a friend of mine who, who is a famous researcher said, they tend to be legends in their own minds. <laughs> 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 they can't get enough of telling themselves how great they are. <laughs> when in the cosmic scheme of things, you know, they're they're nothing. You know, you get a few miles from Earth and you see that we're just this little blue dot, as Carl Sagan says, floating out in the middle of space. They don't have that picture. That's one aspect of them. And the other part is they can't care. Mm -hmm. Nothing matters to them except that throne that they want to assign to themselves. People and their lives mean nothing. Your whole well, your entire role in life, according to some people, is to be subservient, to be dominated, 
to be broken and to knuckle under. That's your whole purpose. You have no other value. Well, like I said, these folks have always been with us. They always will, perhaps. But we are at a point in our social and personal evolution where we simply must recognize such folks for who they are and never, ever afford them the reins of power. I don't care how many promises they make us. I don't care how much they tell us how great they'll make us or what they'll do for us. We can't afford it. Thank you very much for a sincere answer. And practically, if we come to the relationship, to the direct relationship between people, how we practically can come to an honest partnership and care and respect, of course, for each other, practically. What do you think about that? It's all about imposing the proper limits and boundaries. You know, uh, some, some barriers between us, some boundaries between us uh, are inherently divisive unnecessarily and need to come down. So for us to be united, we have to bring down some barriers. But some barriers, some boundaries are absolutely essential for our safety. And the real key is trusting the inner voice of what love is really all about. So if I'm in a relationship, practically speaking, and every day my heart is aching because I feel mistreated, even if my manipulator is convincing me or doing their best to convince me that I don't know what I'm talking about, if that inner voice is telling me this is not healthy, then I need to impose some boundaries and expectations. I need to set some limits and say, you know what, this is not tolerable. I'm not going, I'm not going to put myself one other day, one other moment in this kind of a situation. So it's very practical. Some boundaries are meant to be broken so that we can come together. Some boundaries are absolutely essential. It's always a matter of what truly the loving thing is. And that's the answer to that always rests in here. We have to trust that. And from your point of view, what are the what changes are necessary for a person in the society so that people uh, give up their intentions to secretly use each other in their own interests? Well, it, that's why I, I, I wrote an entire book about what I call the Ten Commandments of Character. And it all starts, the very first thing that has to happen is the expansion of awareness to appreciate, to come to that point where we open ourselves up to a much bigger picture. The world trains us to be so self-focused. It trains us to be concerned with our petty wants and needs as opposed to appreciating the bigger picture. So it all starts with that. And then once we see that something bigger, This is where the transformation occurs. Once we see that something bigger, it's a matter of our heart to turn ourselves over to that something bigger. To become the very willing servant of this creative enterprise of moving forward. To partner with that inner voice and say, you know what? Let's team up here. (laughs) Let me do my part. Let me do my part, even if it means a great deal of sacrifice. Even if it means I part company with a lot of the things that have brought me safety and security, and even if I have to suffer some. But I am not going to be part anymore of this broken system, and I'm going to do my part to make things better. Thank you very much. The other question uh, that I'd like to ask is connected, of course, with the Creative Society project. The Creative Society project is based, like you've mentioned many, many times today, and you uh, stressed on that today, sir, is based on honesty and 
openness of information for everyone, where human life is the main value and the whole community is interested in self-realization and the disclosure of the potential of everyone. Do you think uh, the rejection of manipulative relationships can bring us closer to such a society? Oh, my goodness. Yes, I, I, I first want to follow up on what you just said about the importance of honesty. One of the commandments that I talk about is reverence for the truth. And by reverence, I mean holding it in such esteem and, in, and with such awe that you properly respect its power. And unfortunately, that uh, also is a matter of the heart and it takes folks many times a long time to get to that place where they can be honest with ourselves as well as others. The reason, ultimately, from a psychological perspective, that we don't want to have such reverence for the truth is because of the burden that it puts on us. We are creatures of economy. Loving is inherently hard. I'm not talking about the sentiment. It's easy to have feelings. It's easy to find yourself attracted. I'm not talking about any of those aspects of what we have traditionally called love. I'm talking about the behavior that requires that you sacrifice, that you suffer. It's work. And you have to have the heart for that kind of work. You have to have the willingness to serve something bigger and pick up that burden that it takes to be part of the solution instead of part of the problem. And most of us are just too selfish to do that for too much of our lives until forced to. And uh, all the great sages have said that the only two things that can bring us to a point of change there is either magnificent joy or, or elation, some kind of boundless, wonderful event happens that takes us to a, a whole new place, or pain, incredible pain and suffering to make us appreciate what really matters and what doesn't. And unfortunately, I think the world's in a place right now where a lot of folks are coming to realize what matters uh, the hard way. Uh, as they witness so much unnecessary suffering and destruction all around them. All the things that the human ego can do in its pomposity and grandiosity and its determined determination to dominate. It's a pretty ugly thing. It is true. It is so true. May I ask you for the next question, open um, answer, honestly and shortly. In the creative format, of the society and relationships between people where, of course, the human life is the main value, where there is honesty between people, where there is friendship, understanding, caring for each other, love. Is there a place for manipulation? No, there's no place for it, uh, frankly, because it prevents genuine openness, and anything that prevents genu genuine openness is not from the source. It's not from that inner voice. Manipulation always seeks to maintain a position of advantage. I only manipulate because I want to be safe and secure and advance my agenda and be in supposed control, as opposed to just really being open and trusting that greater force trusting it and participating with it in healing the world, basically. What would be your message to the world? If yeah. you need a minute to think. No, no, it's coming to me already. I would say something is happening. All the crazy stuff that's going on right now might keep you from seeing it, but something is happening. You're actually being somewhere. So don't be swayed. Don't lose hope. Do your best not to be so 
at the brink of despair with all the horribleness around you that you forget that something is happening? Do your best to tune in right here and do your best to keep hope and faith alive. That's what I would say. Thank you very much, sir. And if you don't mind, uh, one more question, please. The society of your dream, what is it? The society of my dreams would be an awakened, uh, reverent, in awe society, marveling at all of the unique diversity and all of the gifts set before us at this table. Uh, and it would be a society absent the need to dominate or control. Even the desire to dominate or control. But to just enjoy. That's the society that I'd love to live in. <laughs> and we can help build that one heart at a time. Love is really contagious. The real thing, not the sentiment, not all the things that we've called it, but love, the real thing, it's contagious. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you, you sir. Too. It was a pleasure meeting you and communicating with them. Just, Wonderful you know, truly from the bottom of my heart, I'm so happy to meet you. Thank you very much, sir.